Hello everyone, and welcome to some more remote learning. Today, we're going to go over the cross product. So, in the previous video, we did some examples on the dot product, and remember the result of the dot product was a scalar, whereas for the cross product, the result of the cross product is another vector. And that vector happens to be orthogonal to the two that make up that cross product. But let's jump into one of those definitions. So if we're given vectors u and vectors v in R3, so that's in three dimensions, assuming that both u and v are non-zero, then we have the following formula. That the cross product of u and v, so there's the cross product, the magnitude of that is going to be equal to the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v times the sine of theta. So fairly similar to that dot product formula, except remember the dot product was cosine of theta, not that sine of theta. And again, because that cross product results in a vector, we need to take the magnitude of that to get that scalar. And again, this is for zero less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to pi. And that theta is that angle between u and v. Now the cross product, if you remember back to when we created that three-dimensional quarter minute system, that x, y, z coordinate system, we talked about the right-hand rule. So in order to label those axes, we had to do x to y to z. And again, this is my right hand I'm using, I believe I might be mirrored for you guys, where our thumb was what pointed towards z. Cross product is going to be that same concept. Vector u cross vector v, if we line those tails of the vectors up, if this is vector u, and I'm crossing it with vector v, so remember, take that right hand and go from the head of u towards the head of v, and that angle between them, remember, is between zero and pi, so less than or equal to 180, so crossing from the head of u to v, that thumb points in the direction of our cross product. So this vector here is vector u cross v. That's the direction. Now, this formula I introduced helps us calculate the magnitude of that. But in order to find the direction, remember that right-hand rule. And the neat thing about the right-hand rule is, if you notice, my thumb is perpendicular to both vector u and vector v. So regardless of the angle in between vector u and vector v, I'm going to have a right angle between u cross v with both vector u and vector v. So the cross product creates an orthogonal vector to both u and v. So knowing that, let's dive into this a little more thinking about example one. So in example one, we're to sketch the vectors u, which is one, two, zero, and vector v, which is negative two, one, zero. And the first question is, well, which way does u cross v point? So let's go ahead and try to graph that together. I'll go ahead and draw my three dimensions. So here's my positive y, my positive x, and my positive z. Now, for vector u and vector v, I'm gonna put both of those tails at the origin. So starting at the origin for vector u, I'm one in the positive x, two in the positive y, and zero in the z. So this actually falls in the xy plane. So one in the x, two in the y, will put me at this point roughly here. So I'll go ahead and draw that vector. There is my vector u. And again, if you can envision that, that's in that xy plane because my z coordinate is zero. Also, v, that third component is zero as well. However, we're negative two in the x, so back two, and then a positive one in the y. So there's my vector v. Now right away, which way does u cross v point? So get out your right hands, start at the head of u, and wrap around to v. Notice that we're going to point upwards in that positive z direction, or thinking about our coordinate and unit vectors in that k direction. 
Whereas if I asked, how does V cross U point? Well then, my right hand is going to need to be flipped upside down because I'm starting at the head of V curling towards U. Now my thumb's pointing down. But we'll get into that a little bit. So just something to be thinking about. So we know that U cross V, again, I'll go ahead and draw it, is going to point upwards. That is going to be vector U cross V. And I'll make a note that it points in that K direction or positive Z direction. Now the next question says, what is the magnitude of U cross V? And the way I calculate that is by using that formula. I know my magnitude of U, I can calculate, and my magnitude of V I can calculate, but the sine of theta, how do I find that theta? Well, if we want to, finding the angle between U and V, we know another formula for that. And that's the dot product. So let's find the magnitude of U, the magnitude of V, and we'll find the dot product between vectors U and V to figure out that angle. So the magnitude of vector U is going to be the square root of one squared plus two squared plus zero squared, which is going to be the square root of one squared plus two squared is four, so that's the square root of five. And the magnitude of vector V is also going to be the square root of five, because negative two squared is four, four plus one squared is five, square root of five, again. Now we're going to calculate the dot product to help us find that angle in between. Remember, the dot product was u dot v, that scalar is going to be equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta, which we already calculated the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v, so we just need to find that dot product in order to calculate the cosine of theta. But even just looking at this problem, the dot product between those two is going to be one times negative two plus two times one plus zero times zero, which is going to be negative two plus two plus zero, which gives me zero. And remember, whenever the dot product equals zero, right away we know those vectors are orthogonal. So u and v form a 90 degree angle amongst themselves. So we know that theta right away is pi over two. Now we can find the magnitude of u cross v because we know we have the square root of five for the magnitude of u, the square root of five for the magnitude of v, and the sine of theta, the sine of pi over two, that's equal to one. So the square root of five times the square root of five is five times one gives us five. So the magnitude of u cross v is five. So knowing that this points in that k direction and our magnitude is five, five times vector k is zero, zero, five. So that is actually what the cross product is equal to. But we'll go ahead and learn how to calculate that next. So here we're going to actually evaluate that cross product. So we're saying let some vector u be u1, u2, u3 for each of the individual components. And vector v is going to be v1, v2, v3 for each of those individual components. So again, writing that out quickly in vector notation, the cross product of u and v is going to be made up of the determinants of individual matrices. So we'll have vector i, j, k, and then we'll list vector u directly below, u1, u2, u3, and then vector v directly below that, v1, v2, v3. Now when we calculate this out, how we do the cross product is what I like to do, which is going to be a little bit hard to show on this paper, but I'll put my finger over that first column. And the determinant of this matrix here, this two by two matrix that I boxed in, 
is going to give me the scalar that gets multiplied by vector i. So if I was to write this out, I would have u2, u3, v2, v3, that determinant multiplied by vector i. Then I'm subtracting, which is important here, it's important to note that we're going to subtract what we get for j. So if we were to cover up column j with our finger, we're going to make a matrix out of the two by two components, ignoring our coordinate vectors. So that would be u1, v1, u3, and v3. The determinant of that will get multiplied by vector j. And that, again, is subtracted. So we'll have u1, u3, v1, v3. And that's with vector j. And then finally, we're adding, again, covering up with your finger, that third column. So we're going to be building a matrix, taking the determinant of u1, u2, v1, v2, and multiplying that by vector k. So u1, u2, v1, v2 with vector k. Now, if you're not sure how to figure out the determinant, I have videos already up on my site about that. However, let's go through it quickly writing this out. So if you can see, doing the determinant, I'll do u2 times v3 minus u3 times v2. So u2 v3 minus u3 v2. And that's multiplied by vector i. And then I'm subtracting the determinant of this next matrix multiplied by vector j. So u1 times v3 minus u3 times v1. And again, that's multiplied by vector j. And then I'm adding all of this to, again, that determinant times vector k. u1 v2 minus u2 v1 times vector k. So notice that the result of the cross product is a vector. So just for some practice, in example two, so we're going to find the cross product of u and v, where u is negative 3i plus 2k, and v is 6i minus a 4k. And there was a typo, so I had to adjust it, but I'll fix it on the worksheet once I post it. So writing out vector u in vector notation, we'll get negative 3, 0, 2, and vector v will be 6, 0, negative 4. So if I'm doing the cross product between these two, u cross v, that's going to be, well, let's set it up. I'll have i, j, k, and lots of times I'll write those just in cursive just to help me remember that those are vectors. And then u goes first, so that'll be negative 3, 0, 2, and then v is 6, 0, negative 4. Now I'm going to write out each of those individual determinants. So covering up i, I'll get 0, 2, 0, negative 4, i, and remember we're subtracting our j, so the determinant, if we covered up row j, would be negative 3, 2, 6, negative 4. We'll find that determinant, multiply it by vector j, and then we're going to add the other matrix, which will eventually calculate its determinant, multiplied by vector k. So covering up k, that's negative 3, 0, 6, 0. So let's go ahead and write this out. 0 times negative 4 minus 2 times 0, that's going to be 0 minus 0 i. And then I'm subtracting negative 3 times negative 4 is 12, minus 2 times 6, which is 12, times vector j, plus negative 3 times 0, minus 0 times 6. So that's going to be 0 minus 0 k. So if you see, I'll get 0i, 
minus 0j plus 0k, the vector I get here is 0, 0, 0. I just got the 0 vector. And the 0 vector technically doesn't have a direction. But let's think about this in terms of the definition that we first learned. If you remember that definition, that said that the magnitude of u cross v was equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the sine of theta. So for our cross product, we just got the zero vector. And the magnitude of the zero vector, well, the vector has no direction and it has no length. So the magnitude of the zero vector is zero. So if we got zero, we know for a fact that vector u and vector v were both non-zero vectors, which means that the sine of theta had to be zero in order to get the cross product and that magnitude to be zero. And when does the sine of theta equal zero? Well, that's when theta is going to be either zero, because the sine of zero, thinking back to our unit circle, is zero, or pi, because the sine of pi is also zero. So that's zero degrees or 180 degrees between our vectors, which means that our vectors are either going in the same direction or opposite directions. So if we think about going in the same direction or opposite directions, that means that our vectors were parallel and parallel vectors are scalar multiples of each other. And look up here at u and v. If I took vector u and multiplied it by a negative two, that would give me vector v because I'd have negative two times negative three, which would be six. Zero times negative two is zero. And negative two times two is a negative four. There we have that vector v, which is a scalar of negative two times u. So they're parallel. So that's just another neat thing that you can figure out with the cross product, although it's so much easier if we would have realized that they were scalar multiples right at the start, we would have known that their cross product would have been the zero vector. So that's just a handy tip for when we move forward. But let's jump into more examples on our second page. So in example three, given negative two i plus five k and v as one i plus one j plus three k, let's go ahead and find the cross product of u and v. So u cross v is going to be, let's write those coordinate unit vectors, i, j, and k, and then vector is negative two, zero, five, where v is 1, 1, 3. So again, using that finger, if you're writing this out, to cover up our first column, we'll have 0, 5, 1, 3, and that gets multiplied by vector i. And then we're not adding, but subtracting. Go ahead and cover up that middle column, writing the rest of those numbers. That will be negative 2, 5, one and three, and that gets multiplied by vector j, and then we're adding that to, now multiplying, covering up that third column, negative two, zero, one, one, to vector k. So doing out this math, zero times three is zero, minus five times one, so zero minus five, i, and then we'll subtract, negative two times three is a negative six, and we're subtracting five times one, so subtracting five, that gets multiplied to j, and then we'll add negative two times one, which is negative two, minus zero times one, which is zero, and that's multiplied to k. So I found the determinant of those smaller two by two matrices, again, diagonal left to right, minus diagonal right to left. So writing this out, finishing out the math, zero minus five, we have a negative five i minus 
negative 5 minus 5 is going to be a negative 11. And if I'm subtracting a negative, that's the same as adding a positive 11. So plus 11j plus negative 2 minus 0 is a negative 2. So I'll subtract 2k as opposed to adding a negative 2k. So in vector notation, if you want to write it, it's negative 5, 11, negative 2. That's the cross product of u and v. But remember from the beginning of the video, we talked about that the cross product was going to be orthogonal or perpendicular to both u and v. So if this vector, negative 5, 11, negative 2, is perpendicular or orthogonal, to vector u and it's also orthogonal to vector v i can do a quick double check of my math because remembering that dot product the dot product between two orthogonal vectors equals zero so if i take u cross v and dot it with u or i take this vector u cross v and dot it with v either one of those the result should be the scalar zero so let's just do that as a double check real quick. So I'll take negative 5, 11, negative 2, and I'll go ahead and dot this with vector u, which is negative 2, 0, and 5. Negative 5 times negative 2 is 10, plus 11 times 0 is 0, plus negative 2 times 5 is a negative 10. 10 minus 10 gives me 0. Check, we are indeed orthogonal because the dot product between u cross v and vector v was equal to zero. So on your own, why don't you find the dot product between u cross v and vector v? It should also be zero. This is just a good double check when you're taking an exam or a quiz to do after you complete the cross product, just to ensure that you didn't screw up any mental math when working through those determinants. But Let's move on to part B. Now that we know, we have the correct solution. In part B, it says to find the cross product of V cross U, which don't worry, we don't have to do this cross product out again. Because remember the cross product U with the right hand rule pointed in one direction, whereas if we crossed V with U, we get that same vector pointing in the opposite direction. So vector v cross u is equivalent to the opposite or negative u cross v. So all I got to do is take my vector I got in part a and multiply it by a negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 5, 11, negative 2. That's going to give me positive 5, negative 11, positive 2 for v cross u. Same magnitude as u cross v, just the opposite direction. So in example four, we're going to find two vectors orthogonal to the given vectors 0, 2, 1 and 3, negative 4, 2. So remember, the result of a cross product is an orthogonal vector. And how do we get two vectors that are orthogonal? Well, u cross v or one vector crossed with the other will give us one vector that's orthogonal to both. And then if we cross it the opposite way, v cross u, we're going to get another vector that's orthogonal just in that opposite direction. So all we got to do is the cross product between these two vectors, doesn't matter which order, that's going to be one orthogonal vector, and then we'll multiply it by a negative one to get another orthogonal vector. So I'll start with my first vector and cross it with my second vector. So we'll have i, j, k. So I'll write my first vector, 0, 2, 1, and my second vector, 3, negative 4, 2. Now I'll evaluate that cross product. So covering up that first column, I'll have 2, 1, negative 4, 2, i, minus, covering up that middle column, 0, 1, 3, 2, that gets multiplied by j, 
and then plus, covering up that third column, zero, two, three, negative four, multiplied by vector k. Two times two, calculating this determinant, two times two is four, minus one times negative four is minus negative four, so that'll be four plus four, i, minus zero times two is zero, minus one times three, j, plus zero times negative four is zero, minus two times three, which is six, k. So that will be eight i minus a negative three will be plus three j minus a six k. If we wanted to write this in vector notation, that's eight, three, negative six. That's our solution, but only one vector. But before we do the other, let's do a quick double check in our head to make sure that this is indeed orthogonal. So if I did the dot product of eight, three, negative six with that first vector, zero, two, one, eight times zero is zero, plus three times two, which is six, plus negative six times one, which is negative six, that'll leave me with six plus negative six, which does indeed equal zero. There we go. 15 seconds or less, I double checked and I know I have the correct solution. And all I have to do to get that second vector that's orthogonal, as opposed to doing the cross product, doing my second vector crossed with my first, I'm just going to multiply this whole thing by a negative one. So my other vector will be negative eight, negative three, and a positive six. So there we have it, eight, three, negative six, and negative eight, negative three, six, as two vectors orthogonal to my given vectors. Now let's continue on to our last example on this worksheet, example five, where we're going to get into finding an area of a parallelogram and an area of a triangle, which is actually this really cool application of the magnitude of the cross product. Let's talk about it. It says given vertices A, B, and C, where A is the point zero, 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 B is the point one, two, three, and C is the point five, four, one. So those points A, B, and C are going to be used to create these line segments A, B, and line segment A, C. And those line segments are two adjacent sides of a parallelogram, meaning that those sides are touching. So if I was just to roughly draw this out, I'll put A at point zero, 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 then B, if you can envision this sort of in three dimensions, but I'm kind of putting it on the same plane, I'll put B as some point one, two, three, and then we'll have some point C over here as five, four, one. Now I'm putting these all in the same plane so that I don't have to deal with this three dimensional figure. I'm just dealing with a parallelogram, which is a two dimensional figure so it's going to fall on some plane that these three points are a part of. So if I have some segment AB and another segment AC, those are two sides of my parallelogram. I'm also going to have some other point, we'll call it D, that I will connect into. So here is some point D. And I believe if we were actually able to put D in that plane, we'd get the point six, six, four, that would complete this parallelogram. But I'll just leave it as some point D because that's not necessarily important for this problem. Now the area of the parallelogram, area is equal to the base of the parallelogram times the height. Whereas the base is this length of A to C and the height is from the base perpendicularly to point B. So our base essentially is the length or the magnitude of vector AC. So if you can envision this as some vector AC, the magnitude of that is the base of our parallelogram. So filling that chunk in, AC 
c is the base. So I'm going to use the magnitude of that vector. Now I need to calculate my height. And remember this line segment is perpendicular to that base. So I'll be able to use a trig function to help me solve for this height. If I have some angle here, let's call that angle theta, what trig function can I use that incorporates our height, h, and something known, or something we can figure out? Well, we know point AB, we can easily find the length of AB, because again, the length is going to be the magnitude of vector AB. That's going to be that length. But if we're solving for our height, what trig function would I use? Sine, right? Because the sine of theta is equal to opposite, which is h, over our hypotenuse, the magnitude of a, b. So if the sine of theta is equal to our opposite side, so our height h, that I labeled h, over our hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of vector a, b, that length, how would I solve for h? Because that's what's missing in my area formula. I just would multiply the magnitude of a, b over. So if I multiplied that magnitude over, I'd have the magnitude of a, b sine of theta equals h. So filling that in, the magnitude of a, b times the sine of theta. But wait a second, what's this formula? That's the magnitude of the cross product between those vectors. So the magnitude of the cross product or vector AC crossed with vector AB and the magnitude of that. So in order to find the area of the parallelogram, we just have to cross vector AC with vector AB and find that magnitude. And before we do that, we have to actually calculate these vectors, which is kind of nice for this problem because the tail of both of those vectors is the point zero, zero, zero. So let's first find vector AC. Vector AC, remember, head minus tail. So five minus zero, comma four minus zero, comma one minus zero. So vector AC is five, four, one. And vector AB is one, two, three. One minus zero, two minus zero, three minus zero. Now I can find the magnitude of each of those and then find the angle in between them and multiply to get the magnitude, which the magnitude is that area. Or to save myself some time, I'm just going to do the cross product and take the magnitude because that is the area. So writing now I, J, and K, I'll do my first vector as five, four, one, and my next vector is one, two, three. AC crossed with AB. Covering up that first column, I'll have four, one, two, three, I, and then I'm going to be subtracting, covering up that second column, five, one, one, three, and that's J, and then I'm going to go ahead and erase this, but remember, our area of our parallelogram is that magnitude of vector AC cross with vector AB. So then I'm going to add, covering up that third column, five, four, one, two, times vector K. So this is going to give me four times three is 12, minus two times one, so 12 minus two is 10, I minus five times three is 15 minus one, so that'll be 14 J, and then I'll be adding that to five times two is 10, minus four will be six K. So this vector is 10, negative 14, six. And remember, feel free to do a quick double check by taking the dot product of this with either vector AC or AB. If we did it really quickly with vector AB, 10 times one is 10, and then I'm subtracting a two times 14, 
or adding a negative 14 times two. So 10 minus 28 gives me a negative 18, and then six times three is that positive 18. So I do indeed get zero for my quick double check. Now remember, this is the cross product, but that area is the magnitude of the cross product. So I need to take the magnitude of this vector, which is going to be the square root of 10 squared plus a negative 14 squared plus six squared. And just so I don't cover up the work, I'll continue down further. That's going to leave me with the square root of 100 plus 14 squared is 196 plus six squared is 36. So that's going to be the square root of 332, which if we wanted to simplify this down, that square root of 332, a perfect square of four goes into that because four times 83 is 332. So this will be two root 83. And I don't believe we can simplify this down any further. So two root 83 and that'll be units squared because I did not give us anything specific for the units of this parallelogram. Two root 83 units squared is our area in part A. Now in part B, it says to find the area of the triangle formed by the vertices A, B, and C. Which, if we're looking at this picture, if we were to draw the triangle A, B, C, we would have half of the parallelogram. So the area of a triangle, if the area of a parallelogram is going to equal AC cross with AB, well then the area of the triangle is going to be equal to that cross product, the magnitude of that divided by two. So all we have to do is divide two root 83 by two to get root 83 or the square root of 83 units squared. That's the area of our triangle. And again, this is all based on the fact that area is base times height. We know our base length because that's just the magnitude of our vector. And to get the height, that's the magnitude of our vector multiplied by the sine of theta. That gives us our height. And when you put that all together, that is a definition. The magnitude of u cross v equals the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the sine of theta. So this is a really cool application of using that definition. And with that, we wrap up this worksheet. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll go over lines in space. So until then, good luck with your online learning.